Hello and welcome. This is NTA Tuesday Live and I'm Cyril Stover. Now the fight against corruption in Nigeria by the present administration has been observed to be recording huge successes. These include the recovery of stolen funds running into trillions of naira. Now the administration holds that when you fix corruption, you automatically fix 95% of the country's problems. And analysts say the concern of the Buhari administration is to instill fiscal discipline in the economic life of Nigeria and run a transparent government. President Buhari has said his administration's fight against corruption is not a witch hunt, but rather an attempt to save the country, a fight he believes is a collective one. Now, how well are the citizens keen into this? What's the take on calls for special anti-corruption courts to try alleged looters? These are some of the issues we'll be raising in tonight's program. But first, let's get to see this report by Fukunonsu Wabweze. As promised during his campaigns, President Muhammad Buhari has been consistent and fierce in his fight against corruption. Apart from strengthening anti-corruption agencies, policies such as the whistleblower, Treasury Single Account, TSC, among others, have yielded positive results. Three years down the lane, the federal government has blocked leakages, saved a lot of money, and has secured 486 convictions and recovered more than 500 billion naira from those who abused public trust. We are pursuing recoveries everywhere and are making sure that anyone who has been found culpable is made to answer for his or her crime under the law. The goal of this administration is to ensure the protection of public trust. There is therefore no better time than now for us to intensify the fight against corruption, to ensure that the international community no longer views Nigeria as one that is fantastically corrupt. These huge successes notwithstanding, the federal government is also working towards securing more convictions in the ongoing high-profile corrupt cases being handled at different courts across the country, a move a cross-section of Nigerians say is commendable. And I think one of the things that uh, President Buhari wanted to achieve when he came in almost on board was the anti-corruption bill, you know, which he submitted, an executive bill he submitted immediately, he was inaugurated as a president in order to facilitate the hearing of anti-corruption cases. Now, it is not the problem or the fault of the president that the bill has not been passed into law till date. And there's nothing else he could have done beyond that. You know, he needed the collaboration of the legislature, that's the National Assembly, to be able to pass that bill into law in order to be able to help accelerate the issue of trial of suspects standing trial for corruption. Nigeria has never had it so good because uh, it's someone who is laying a foundation and laying the awareness to all Nigerians that uh, corruption should be a no-go area for any Nigerian. And uh, judging from his own uh, type of person he is, his world acclaimed that he's corruption free, he's a man of integrity, and that's why he's in the position to fight uh, corruption. He has started the good work and all of us must join. Some people will be saying that some people are not even questioning why they are corrupted. But uh, we feel if you feel that uh, Mr. A has been into corruption or he has corrupted the government, so to say, and he has been questioned, okay, you that you are complaining, the other person also is corrupt come and prove to the nation that this is where this Mr. B also has been corrupted. These glaring strikes by the present administration did not go unnoticed within the international community. Hence the unanimous endorsement of President Muhammad Buhari by the African Union as its chief anti-corruption crusader for the year 2018, a task he pledged to deliver on. With the endorsement of your excellencies, during the course of 2018, I wish to prioritize the following initiatives to help us in the fight against corruption. A, to organize African youth congresses against corruption in order to sensitize and engage our youth 
is the fight against corruption. With Nigeria still in their need of infrastructure development in order to fast track economic growth, the federal government is now relenting in ensuring that the nation's stolen wealth scattered across the globe is recovered and those involved brought to book. We are committed to working with our foreign friends to stop the inflow of stolen funds from Nigeria into their countries and recovering what is there already. These assets, when repatriated, will be put to building our infrastructure. From being referred to as fantastically corrupt to being elected to champion continental fight against corruption, many say it can only get better for the country if all Nigerians give full support to the present administration's war on corruption. That report sets the tone for tonight's discussion. Let me introduce our guests. We'd like to welcome to this program Senator Chukuka Otazi. He is chairman of the Senate Committee on Anti-Corruption and Financial Crimes. Senator, thanks for being here. It's my pleasure to be here once more. All right. We're also joined tonight by Honorable Justice Marshall Umukoro. He is the Chief Judge of Delta State and a member of the Corruption and Financial Crimes Cases Trial Monitoring Committee. My Lord, thanks for being here. Thank you very much. Let me also welcome Professor Bolaji Owasomoyi. He's a Professor of Law and Member, Executive Secretary, Presidential Advisory Committee Against Corruption. Thanks for being here. Thank you for inviting me. Right. And uh, joining us from our Lagos Network Center <coughs> is Dr. Tunji Abayomi, who is a constitutional lawyer. Dr. Abayomi, it's good to see you. My pleasure. From Lagos. So, as usual, we acquaint you with the procedure of this program. At the appropriate time, you can get to be part of the discussion in the studio. The various platforms will be on your screen. We advise you take advantage of them. However, for all those who will be calling in at the appropriate time, do us a favor when your call gets through to the studio, turn down the volume of your TV set. Just reduce the volume. That's the way to avoid the hurlback or the echo. And the best way to know that your call has been passed through is you'll see your name appear on screen. Once that happens, it means your call is through to the studio. We advise that you go straight ahead with your question or comment. Don't bother too much about the greetings. Keep it short, straight to the point so that others can get on the platform as well. Once again, welcome to Anti Tuesday Live. Tonight, it's all about the anti-corruption fight of the government. And perhaps a good place to start with is to ask Professor Owasoe, who's a who's member secretary of the Presidential Advisory Committee Against Corruption. Perhaps it's a good place to start to ask him just how well this fight is going on. The president said no corrupt official will be let off the hook, no matter how long it takes. Are we seeing that happening? Thank you very much. I, I think we're seeing it happening. Uh, first of all, um, this government decided to put corruption on the table and on the front burner. And it is discussed in the media every day because it's, it's an existential issue for Nigeria. Um, as the president has uh, said in the past, which is now famously repeated, if we don't kill corruption, it kills the country. Corruption is responsible for the state of affairs, the backward state of affairs in Nigeria today. There's no doubt about it, unless we don't want to confront the issue. Uh, if you look at infrastructure development, why have we been set back in infrastructure development? Corruption is the reason. If you look at the health or educational sector, why are we behind, lagging behind? Corruption is the reason. If you look at some of the environmental challenges that we have, why are we where we are? Corruption is the issue. Uh, if you look at the state of the civil service, the fact that people don't earn enough pay, why? Because some people pocket the money. How does it happen? Corruption affects both revenue and expenditure items of government. Revenue, when people earn money, everybody says Nigeria is rich. But only few people symbolize or typify that wealth. The majority are in squalor because the revenue that comes or belongs to the people is pocketed by a few. Then when it comes to expenditure, when money is appropriated, some people keep half of it in their pocket. So 
On the one hand, some people steal half of what belongs to all of us. On the other hand, some people steal that which came into the purse, about half of what should be spent by everybody. So we're dealing with an existential issue. So if the government is struggling to achieve any objective in this country, if you don't deal with corruption, which has become very systemic, it's everywhere. In fact, some people, it's a hard sell for you to tell them that corruption is bad because that's what they've always known, okay? So you need to deprogram them and to explain why if you don't deal with corruption, you cannot improve the quality of service you get, service delivery, the educational attainments, health provision, you name it, roads. Let me just close with this. If you look at some major infrastructure projects that have been on the table for quite some time in the country, go and do the profiling of the treatment of those projects. Every year you have appropriations for them. The appropriation goes into a black hole until President Buhari's government, within three years, quite a number of them are making progress. People have to face and confront this reality. So the final issue is that we cannot show that we're serious in fighting corruption unless we deal with the sanctions and enforcement component. That's why the president said, and I agree, that no matter how long it takes, you can run, but you can't hide. You know, people will know that you are parading wealth that is not yours. You have stolen the commonwealth of the people. And if we're not moving forward and all of the reasons for our backwardness is traceable to you, you become a prayer point and a legal matter. We will pray to bring you down and we'll also pursue you to prosecute you. So the, the reality is that we must face corruption. If you want to develop quickly, five, ten years, if we deal with corruption, you'll see the effect. All right, takes time. Uh, the wheels of justice, they turn slowly. Perhaps my Lord would um, take us through that. And how well can you fight corruption if, as is agreed, the wheels of justice turn slowly? Uh, first, let me make uh, this general statement. Under the Constitution, the government has a mandate to abolish corruption and abuse of office. So whether the, the political party does not matter, it's in the constitution that the government must abolish corruption and abuse of office. So where does judiciary come from? The judiciary is just one body in the criminal justice administration process. When do you arrest? It's an executive action. Who investigates? It's an executive action. Who takes the decision to arraign a person before the court? It's an executive action. So at what point should a man be arrested? What facts and figures are before you, before you arrest? And in investigation, what are you looking for? I'm a lawyer. Each offense has what we call ingredients. What are you looking for in investigation? And at the point you say you are going to court, what have you gathered? Are you sure that what you have gathered will sustain a charge? It is at that point the court comes in. In other words, by the time you come to court, the ICPC, the EFCC, the police, the SSS, must have done their work. And what the judiciary will have is the product these people will present before the court. And under the Constitution, it is there. A man is deemed innocent until proved otherwise. So the burden is on the prosecution to lead sufficient evidence to prove the guilt of their person before the judge can say, yes, you are guilty. But the perception that is being painted is that once X, Y, Z is arrested and charged to court, the judge must send him to prison. That is not the law. The average judge took oath of office to uphold the Constitution. All of us, that if you are charged to court, the presumption is that you are innocent until you are proved guilty. So what are they presenting before the court? I'm a member of the committee to 
to look at uh, the trial of uh, financial uh, corruption cases in our courts. Some of the prosecution agencies, we call about, as them about 52 witnesses. I'm happy, Prof is a lawyer. What are you proving? What ingredients are you proving? I just give you an example. Somebody issued a dot check. What led to it? He was given an LPO for about 10 million. He now went to a microfinance bank. Please help me finance the, the contract. The microfinance bank said, no, we are going to join you in executing the contract. Along the line, the thing did not go through. Meanwhile, before the, uh, he uh, transferred the money to him, he was asked to issue a check as a guarantee. At the end, it was reported to EFCC. As at the time it was reported to EFCC, he had refunded about 6.5 million. It was now arraigned in court. By the time we took the IPO, the man has refunded the 10 million. Meanwhile, EFCC paid a staff to fly from Abuja to Oweri to Asaba to give that evidence. So I now ask them, whose interests are you protecting? The man to whom the check was issued has got value for his money. So whose interests are you now protecting? So that is why we said the, prosecution, the prosecuting agency have to put their house in order. The judge, the judge will not go and search for evidence on the streets. You have to lead evidence before the judge to convince him that X, Y, Z is indeed guilty of the offense for the judge to come to that conclusion. If not, I'll be breaching a constitutional oath. All right. Well, this, of course, uh, shouldn't be a loophole, but... Okay, we'll but, uh, we have other time. we tell you why you are talking about this law. Let me give you yes. the... Take the prisons, for instance. Let me take Delta State as a case study. Just yesterday, the government bought and donated buses to the federal prisons. That is a federal agency. They have no vehicles to take awaiting trial inmates to prisons. Take the prison for worry, for instance. It covers about 36 courts, Monday to Friday. They have only two vehicles. Luckily, I'm happy there's a politician here. If you have to cover 36 wards, how many vehicles will be in your cafe train? <laughs> but the prisons that covers 36 courts a day has only two vehicles. Money is not sent to the prison controller to maintain those vehicles. So if the judge is ready, to, is, is in court waiting, the state counsel is waiting, where are the awaiting trial? The government of Delta said has to buy the vehicles. Yesterday, I have this in my phone. The controller said, look, my lord, thank you very much. I know the effort you put in in getting us these vehicles. So, so, so those are some of the factors. All right. We'll return to them as yes. we go on. But let's come to Senator Uchazi now. Where do you see this fight going? Well, you see, the, the most important thing is that the, the executive have set the ball rolling mm. by Mr. President making the fight against corruption the center point of his uh, campaign, pol uh, campaign in 2015, and sustain it to this extent, shows well, you know, to the political way to, uh, to, to do the fight. I'll tell you, in the fight against corruption, it is not a one-man show. There must be synergy between the three arms of government, the legislature, the executive, and the judiciary. If you get, if like uh, my, uh, my, uh, my brother, uh, uh, I was on a prof, I said here, in investigation, you have to once get somebody that has, has committed an offense, a prime, prime offense evidence that have convinced you to arrange this person, you follow the due process to do, get that done. If you don't do that, you have issue. This has been the issue. Most, most of the time we have uh, quarreled in my oversight functions. When we visit the agencies that are under us, we we'll look at the, at the, the, the amount of money budgeted for each year. 
So when you come for budget process again, for the defense of budget, we ask you, so much money has been budgeted for this. Tell us the number of cases you, uh, you've won. Divide it according to the money we have just given you, and tell us whether we, uh, there's justification for the amount of money they have just given for the job you are doing. We we'll look at that. You see, so this, that becomes an issue. So if you do not get things properly done, therefore, you are not going to have the output. I have said it in my oversight most of the time when I visit them. I say, look, overseas, they can take two years, one year, seven months, or just any time to follow issues. They take their time. By the time they just finish the investigation and come to court, you won't spend much time to, uh, to uh, uh, prosecute that matter and uh, either give a conviction or discharge the, pe the, the person. But in our case here, you get once uh, somebody, you have primary evidence, you haven't done the full investigation, you, you hold the person, take him to court. Then the newspapers and the television will carry the stories about the person. After, one mo after two, three weeks, he will battle for, for bail. Once the bail is granted, then everything just goes under. So it's the essence of taking the, uh, the, 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 the suspect just to make the whole noise, you know, put his public image over there for people to guess one way or the other. If the issue is just to go and convict the person, you have to spend and take your time. That is the issue. That which time, most of the time when we go for oversight, we ask, look, so much money has been voted for, for this. And this is what we are getting. Should this be the case? So, but it takes, uh, it takes a two to tango. You see, in investigation, you check all those people who are concerned, you know, uh, and uh, make sure that all those people are working in synergy. If they don't, not, don't doing so, it becomes an issue. But the most important thing is that we are doing a bit in the legislature. We are giving the backing, all the backing that is needed to ensure that this fight is sustained and, and uh, 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 to ensure that uh, we make progress in this effort. So, but it has, like, just like I say, it takes the whole three yes. to be united in, in getting this done. But if we don't do so, we'll be wasting time. All right. Well, let's go over to our Lagos Center now, where we have uh, Dr. Tunji Abayomi, a constitutional lawyer in there. Now, Dr. Abayomi, how well are the citizens keen into this anti-corruption fight? What do you see? I think the essential issue is that the foundation for the struggle against corruption is being laid by the present government. Now you ask, is that the totality of the effort? Well, you could say the a foundation of a house is the house, and it is also not the house. It is a house in the sense that you cannot build a house without a foundation. It is not the house because you still have to build the wall. I have said again and again that corruption in Nigeria is like a wasting disease at the early stage or stages. It is difficult, it is difficult to detect, but easier to cure. But in our nation, it has got into a late stage. It is easy or easier to detect, but difficult to cure. The important thing is that if we recognize, and it's, a, it's essential for this nation to know how terrible the, the, the evil of corruption is. You just look back four years ago, a renegade, an army of renegades, basically nearly took over this nation. They had visited Abuja with their disorder and their horror, invaded the police headquarters, invaded the United Nations office, confronted 
military garrison took over eight local governments. There's no reason why all of this happened. It is purely because of corruption. So now, in my view, if I have the view that the government is not doing anything, let us even assume you, you have that perception. One of the greatest service that any government can give to this nation is to begin the struggle against corruption. We fought against the military. We want freedom from, uh, first of all, from the domination of uh, uh, the domination of the British colonialism. We fought against the domination of dictatorship. I was one of the frontliners in that battle. I think now the nation, and I'm talking of our people, because the issue is not just about government. It is about a people's determination to free themselves from a neurosis that is basically destroying the very fabric of their existence. I think it was Thomas Paine when he was addressing American Congress who said, for a nation to know liberty, it is sufficient to will for it and to know freedom. It is enough to work for it. If we are going to fight against corruption, corruption successfully, we will be deluding ourselves to think that a, a, a disease that has eaten deep into the marrow of a nation can only be healed by the government. It must be a people's determination, a people's movement against corruption. So for me, I commend the government because before this government came into power, a lot of Nigerians were already giving up on this nation. And although the government has not achieved everything or has not reached the zenith of its effort, the battle has begun and the battle is moving on. Thank you, Dr. Abayomi. Well, let's get back here to Abuja Center. And, uh, <laughs> Prof, it's always the thing that, you know, because uh, so, as it has all been agreed, um, you need to follow due process. But it is beginning to seem to the public, to citizens generally, that there are so many loopholes here. And you're dealing with people who are otherwise powerful. If you say those who looted the train, <coughs> they have taken so much money, they can afford anything. So it gets almost impossible to move these people. And the public has a perception that, well, while they may not be able to prove easily, they can tell at least some bit of it that some people might yes, yeah. you know, yeah. very well not believe in within their means. Yeah. But again, it goes back to the steps of those who are fighting it or who are driving the, you know, the process and those who should consolidate that fight. And those who are accused are strong enough to stall the process. Now, how can you move forward in this situation? L let me say that um, Nigeria is not peculiar in this scenario that you have painted. All over the world, the rich and the powerful, the very corrupt, who have deep pockets, they fight the system to its limit, always. They use the opportunity to challenge every word, every comma, every section, every subsection of the law in order to escape justice. In cultures where the systems are very strong, they go violent as well. They try and hijack witnesses, they try and terrorize people, and all that. So when we say due process and rule of law, it is in the interest of everybody to protect it. Today, I, I may be on the side of government and seen as being part of the enforcement of anti-corruption issues. Tomorrow, I, will need, I could need the rule of law to protect me. So clearly, we, have, we are not under any illusion that we must respect due process and the rule of law. Now, you talked about perception, and it is critical. 
Now, one of the challenges I believe that the judiciary has with public perception is that sometimes the public feels, look, this is a very obvious case. This man has been a civil servant all his life. He has been found with X number of billions, even if he never spent his salary since he was born. Yes. Obviously, surely you must know he has stolen the money. Why can't you send him to jail? Why are you saying they have not proved the case? Okay, this is the dilemma. Okay, and the public sometimes is baffled. When they say justice is blind, then they ask, is justice also deaf? Okay, if justice cannot see because it wants to be balanced and fair, but surely it can hear. Now, these are dilemmas we have to deal with. And in the Presidential Ad Advisory Committee, we realize that this is, these are critical issues that we need to deal with. So one of the things we did, the very first salary document that we produced for this fight against corruption for government was an asset recovery uh, strategy. Because we know that for criminal sanction, you need proof beyond reasonable doubt. For civil recoveries, you can't prove how you got the money, but we cannot prove how you stole it. Mm. Okay? So we cannot declare you a thief. But at the same time, you cannot explain how you got the asset. We can take it away. And the law allows it. The Constitution permits it. So we said, look, let's first of all dispossess them of the asset. That's why the asset recovery process is top grade. As far as the, because it was clear to us that this due process and rule of law business put beyond reasonable doubt. Our experience, we are all lawyers on the committee and criminologists. It was very clear that that would be a sticky point. Not that we're abandoning it, we'll still pursue it. Secondly, we know that for government to make progress, you need intelligence and information. So we could incentivize people to give that information. So Parker designed the whistleblower policy of government and said, okay, fine. It's in your interest to report that your neighbor is a thief, that your cousin or brother is a thief. Mm -hmm. But you don't want to do so for all manner of reasons, ethnic, religious, moral, my townsman. But if we incentivize you, that might as well attract you. Okay. Okay? So that's why we designed the whistleblower policy, which is being run by the, uh, under the Minister of Finance. Mm -hmm. Third point, we then started looking at the anti-corruption agencies to deal with these issues, this, this scenario that you so rightly and graphically painted. Mm -hmm. Clearly, the courts will deal with what you take before them. But there are a myriad of issues even around that. Yes, there is investigation, the quality of it. Yes, there is prosecution, the quality of it. But what we found, and for this, I hope the judiciary will be able to deal with it. The kind of corruption that we found was very primitive. Primitive in the sense that people were not even making efforts to cover their tracks. It was impunity because they did not expect anybody to ask questions. So, for example, you will find governors who will take money, they will collect it in cash, and they just ask somebody to go and pay it into their account. The people are alive. They collect the money from state account. You know, the people are there to give evidence, okay? So very blatant, high-level impunity. And they did not think that there would be any backlash. Now, when such stories hit the media, the public expect that this is an open and short case. But unfortunately, the law itself has tenets. There are things that you must still present, even processes and procedure through which you present it. And if you fall foul of any of those, technicality, All right. you can lose the case on that. So people want to see the justice of it not the technicality of it. And we're trying to work together to make sure that that happens. Okay, we'll come to the issue of technicality, but let's take our very first call on this program. Uh, this is coming from Port Harcourt. Peter is on the line. Hello, Peter. Peter from Port Harcourt, are you there? Is this recorded? Okay, well, we'll have to move on. Uh, Peter, yes, can um, you? Okay, right. Are you hearing me? Right, go ahead. I'm hearing you. I'm hearing you. Go um, on. So I want to talk about the issue of corruption, hmm. fighting against corruption in Nigeria. So I believe that it's politicized. It's not for the Nigeria. Because if you watch now, if you belong to this very party, you are not corrupt. If you cross to that party, you are corrupt. 
So even if we are fighting really corruption, the lawyers who are supposed to be, they, 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 they stand for the common man, they have failed their job. The police have failed their job. The, 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 the people that represent us, or they present, they present us in the National Assembly, they are afraid of jobs. They, I don't know what the kind of corruption they are fighting in Nigeria, where fuel is very scarce, everything is bright. You go to hospitals, nothing works. You pay money before they will even give you cash to register you. Uh, is that a corruption? Is that how to fight corruption? If you are fighting corruption in National Assembly, they should look into the uh, other sectors to rescue the life of Nigerians from poverty. All right. Thank you very much, Peter. We, we lost the call, but you had already made your point. But uh, before we move on, let's just even bring this back to talk there, what, what, what Peter has just said. From the work you're doing, do you see this as mean on only party lines? In other words, how well, you know, how well spread is this fight? Are you saying it that it's just like he alleges that there, it's a it's a party thing that uh, it's, it's only those it's belong to any case. particular party? It's always the case that people would say, "Oh, why, why me?" Hmm. If you're a prosecutor, there are four of us on this panel right hmm. now here. If you're a prosecutor, and the three of us have done wrong, it is entirely at your discretion where to start from. You can use me as a witness against him. It's entirely up to you where to start from. That, that's the first point. And usually when you take over a place, let's imagine that you become head of NTA today. Mm. You, have, you want to start looking at things, maybe you made a lot of anomalies and you see them. Where are you going to start from? Are you going to start from the regimes before yours? You start from the immediate past and walk back as far as you can go or you want to go. Mm. This is always the reality. Top, next point is that if, for example, there's a perception that somebody wants to escape justice today, who cross party lines, mm -hmm. they can only delay, assuming that that is the case. You can only delay. So long as you truly are guilty of something, sooner or later, somebody will get to you. That's why President Buhari was saying, no matter how long it takes. Okay? But, you see, in our, in our system, we can use a number of things as defense measures. You can plead political party lines. You can plead ethnic affiliations. Religion. You can plead religious sentiments. You can plead persecution. But the only thing I don't hear, which baffles me, is for them to say I'm innocent. The strongest argument is to say I'm innocent. <laughs> Not to say, oh, why are you <laughs> prosecuting me? It's okay. because I'm in the other party. Why are you prosecuting me? It's because I'm in the other religion. The strongest defense for all times is it's innocence. And the way to prove that is if I take you to court, I will be in a hurry to prove my innocence. Okay. I don't want delays. I want to vindicate myself. I don't want to stretch it. So these are some of the things that we need to be able to read in between the lines to know what we're dealing with. All right. Back to the phones now. We have uh, from Anambra, Amaka calling in. Hello, Amaka. Amaka, turn down the volume of your TV. I can hear the hurl back from here. Hello. Yes, Good hello. Evening, Go right sir. ahead. Good evening, sir. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Just go ahead. Good evening, sir. Good evening, Amaka. Hello. Go ahead. Hello. Well, are you hearing me? <laughs> yes. Are you are you still there? Okay, let's go. Well, okay, let me say this again. For all those we, we, we say this all the time. For those who are phoning in, once your name appears on screen, just go right ahead with your question or comment. Don't even bother about greeting anyone. Okay? Once your name is on screen, it means your call has been passed through. So just go right ahead. We say this all the time, and we won't stop repeating it. And again, just a quick reminder, turn down the volume of your TV set to avoid the hurlback or the echo. But let's come back to the studio. And now, Milad, the issue of technicalities. And, uh, well, it's a, it's a good thing that uh, Prof. Yeah says all lawyers. No, right. No, it has not to do with it's, it's, it's not only, we uh, won't say technicality. What I'm saying is that if... A man must be sent to jail. Mm. The judge should convince himself that indeed that man is guilty of the offense. And justice is more than two. It's a, it's a four-way traffic. 
Perhaps this question I'm trying to raise mm -hmm. may be unfair and uh, no, hypothetical, yes. but from the point of view of the public, yes. a man who has, for example, taken away maybe 20 billion, yes. and uh, he's charged eventually to court, he can afford five senior advocates, all right? And it is assumed that the senior advocates would have an edge over perhaps a lawyer who just started practicing two years ago. It's assumed. I'm not saying that should be the case. But so perhaps it is a lot easier for a senior advocate who has spent time and who has the experience and knowledge to see where he can apply this thing about technical. If a judge sits back, does he just say, well, as long as you don't oh, present no, to me, even if you know it, <laughs> something is... Toba, <laughs> with your respect, it has nothing to do with the eminence of the lawyer. Right. It has to do with the quality of evidence. Let me just give you an example. There was a kidnap case in Warri two years ago. I conducted that case. The police could not get the kidnappers. You know what the person did? He now called on the brigade commander in the phone, who enlisted the services of a young army captain, intelligence officer who trained in Israel. The army captain now disguised as a houseboy in the judge's quarters and caught the kidnappers red-handed. He planted money for them and caught them red-handed. Intelligence. If a man has so much with intelligence, you can get the man red-handed. When you get him, he's going to file it's going to uh, it's to plea bargain. But when you leave it hazy, when you leave it hazy, the average lawyer will now have a loophole to step into. Okay. The lawyer knows, every lawyer knows that there's a bad case and there's a good case. Prof, am I correct? Correct. Sir. Every lawyer, every lawyer, even the accused person. Presumably but every the moment, judge as the well. Moment, the, moment, the moment there's a loophole, he will harp on it. Okay. But until... Resurrection Day. Okay, my lord, every lawyer knows a good and a bad case. Yes. Presumably a judge as well, because a judge is a lawyer. Yes. So sometimes a judge might see a good and bad case. The judge, the judge, but the his judge, hands are tied. You watch Premier League, the judge is a referee. <laughs> the judge is a referee. You prepare your 11 uh, players, he, he prepares his 11 players. The referee is supposed to blow the whistle where there's a goal or where there's a foul. The judge is not interested. The judge will only follow the rules. Okay. The, all right. That, the is the, that is the point. But so society must know that, that the judge is an arbiter. The judge should be neutral. The hmm. judge is not interested in who will win. But what does the law say? Okay. Definitely, if a man who works for about 35 years, his salary and allowances is under 50 million, and here you see him building a house worth about 1.2 million, it is obvious that something went wrong somewhere. There's no doubt about that. But who will now prove it? There must have to be evidence to convince the judge. Because the trial judge also has his professional reputation at stake. The matter will go on appeal. OK. All right. Well, let's go back to the phones. We have uh, from Kaduna, Chris calling in. Hello, Chris. Chris from Kaduna. Hello. Hello. Yes, go right My ahead. My issue with this issue of corruption. Hmm. Yes. If you want to get people who steal their money, at this computer is, what do you do? Hello. Yes. The issue is, we are talking about corruption. And uh, you will say you don't know who steal our money. Money don't move from one point to another without somebody signing a document. And this money we are talking of, they are in billions. Where is the starting point? I'm privileged to work in a bank. Before a check is being approved, it goes from one table to another for people to verify and attend their signature that will authenticate whether you did it consciously or unconsciously. You will be held responsible for what 
come after it. But why is it in Nigeria that somebody who the public office, you find him, he was nobody, you find him with postcards, he's just there for five months, and people will just start keeping quiet. When there is a whistleblower, people will say they hate him, he's a Christian, he's a Muslim. Criminality does not segregate either Christian or Muslim. Every criminal is a criminal. Our prisons are full by uh, people who steal cows or goods, and here are people sitting on billions of naira. And you tell us that you cannot prosecute them. I don't think everybody has failed us. The judiciary, the police, the members of those families that allowed me to come around without hard work have seen us. I think you should tell every Nigerian to know that corruption is deeply beyond what we know, but we know who have stolen what, unless if we don't want to get them arrested. How? How people go to foreign lands, you see how people are being arranged for just not more than $1,000 dollars owe on a corrupt charges. Please tell us the truth and let's find a way out and deal with this criminal. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Well, let's still take a bit about the uh, about the role of uh, lawyers in uh, cases of corruption. And uh, Dr. Abayomi in our Lagos Network Center. Again, a lot of what we're talking about tonight and uh, what people see as the fight, the success or otherwise of the fight, is opinions have been formed. And not many people are comfortable when cases go to court. And um, they think that uh, it has a lot to do with the quality of prosecution and defense. So what should the role of those who go, as they say, to the temple of justice be? Well, in my view, the, his lordship uh, on this panel, as well as the uh, gentleman in the Presidential Anti-Corruption Committee, have explained very well the situation of the courts. Uh, the court is to do justice according to law. It should, it should be very clear. And the mere fact that there is a clear case, perceivably, does not mean a clear conviction. A conviction must be based on evidence. Otherwise, the society is imperiled. But in my view, I am not particularly interested in the polemics of dialogue about cases in court. I think the problem of corruption in this nation transcends those polemics, in my view. The point needs to be made firmly that this nation is endangered and in trouble. Now, if you look at the situation of Nigeria today, it's to be pitied. I will give you a simple example. I went to a secondary school that was headed by a British Italian. The, his name is Goy Garigulo. He's the son of an Italian general. And he was in Cambridge when he came to Nigeria shortly before independence. A Bobby College needed a mathematics teacher. And it was advertised in Cambridge. And at, uh, as at that time, Nigeria was such a nation of the future. He grabbed that chance and came to this nation. He left the Bobby and came to my village, Okiagwe, to become a, a principal. And he changed the whole community. The point I want to make is that a few years ago, we asked this same man, 
who has been in this nation since the age of 28. He's now about 85. How does he see Nigeria? And he said when he came, Nigeria was said to be one of the great nations of the future. And then we said, so what about that future? He said the future suddenly disappeared. Why did the future of Nigeria from independence until now, why did it disappear? The future of Nigeria disappeared because of corruption of leadership. So it is important for the people of Nigeria because we keep focusing on leadership in this nation. We need to focus on the people. The people must wake up to work for the ideals of government, to make the ideals of government the preoccupation, the desire of the people, to encourage leaders that are worthy of trust and to work against those ones that are not useful in the struggle to develop this nation. If we look at it today, we spend most of our time talking about the federal government. You tell me how many governors in the states and how many leaders in politics make corruption the ideals of government in Nigeria? So let us move this issue beyond the polemics of the courts, beyond the polemics of prosecution. Let us understand that the greatest danger, what has underdeveloped this nation is corruption. What has brought us down, way, way down? What has embarrassed us? What has made it impossible for us to have road, for us to have water, to, for us to have any hospital, for our people not to be respected? It is corruption. So let the people of Nigeria wake up to understand that their greatest enemy is corruption. Thank you, uh, Dr. Abai. We will get back to you in a moment. Um, I do believe we still have a caller on the line from Bayelsa. Is it still there? Tosco from Bayelsa, go right ahead. Thanks for calling in. Corruption. Yes, go right ahead, Tosco. If you're there, go on. Well, Hello? Yes, go right ahead. Your name is on screen. Go on. Hello? Hello, Tosco. Go on. Hello? All right. We might yes, just have uh, to move on. But, uh, Senator, we'll come to you. Mm. You heard Dr. Abayomi. Oh, yes. The people, the leadership. Now, is it that um, our people get the leadership they deserve? Or is it that it's the people who have failed to throw up? In fact, what is the, what's the level of leadership recruitment in society? Because it's the people who throw up their leaders. So if they're leaders, if you have faulty leaders, then you begin to ask questions, like he says. Yes, you see, you know, one of the programs we have had here, right here, we discussed this issue, and I, was, I discussed the issue of uh, the, uh, the book written by Chino Achebe. The trouble with Nigeria, mm -hmm. you know, where he discussed is he put it squarely on the front burner of leadership, leadership recruitment, followership, uh, followership of the populace. That's true. You see, we know that, like Abayomi has just uh, pointed out there, the European who lived in this country at the onset in the sixties, things we are working on. And suddenly, things changed. Military intervention in politics of Nigeria disorganized everything. Yeah, but that was some, that some time that now. That was some time, but yes, we have done. That's part of it. The other issue is that our value orientation has changed. In those good old days, you see people with knowledge. People worship, follow people who, who are with knowledge. Integrity. Integrity. They give them uh, assignments, give them jobs, give them everything, give, rec recognize them. You, that you are a lecturer in university. 
People worship the ground you walk on. That you are uh, walking in a faith-based person. People know that if they come to your house, they, that they, you are going to tell them the truth. In my able situation, in my able, able background, you have also tighty holders. You know they can never tell a lie. So suddenly, this changed. Nigeria, if we are going to go back and educate ourselves, we must go back to the basics. From the house, I, I've discussed it the other time here. I, I, I said it. Today, parents are, re, are hiring people to write exams in common entrance, mm -hmm. in the jam. It starts, the corruption starts from there. You know, you, people who are not supposed to be doing job are giving job. Today, you want to give uh, uh, political positions to uh, people. You are nepotic. Today, you want to hire somebody. You know, you, you want somebody to give you the good job. You hire underdog to do the job of under, or top dog. Leadership recruitment. I said it. Okay, we are borrowing from America for, uh, for all it takes. But if you want to borrow, borrow let us borrow completely. Job. America has hired a son of African immigrant, Obama. Nobody envisaged such. Because he's a top dog. And they want him to do the top job. They forgot about his antecedents. Are we doing that here today? If you want to get the first 11, if you want to get the first 11 to play for you, to get this country, you have to look for men of integrity. They're here. And why, are we, why are we shying away from them? You go and bring uh, recycle people up and down, day in, year out, and you think that they will just give you the answer you want. I instant said it. I said, you, if you continue doing one thing wrong all the time, you don't get the answer you need. So we have to change here our attitude so that we can walk out of it. But if we just continue playing the polemics, like he said, uh, is in the courts, uh, is in uh, the is in investigation, is uh, the judges, is uh, the prosecutors. That's not the issue. The issue is value orientation. We must wake up. Election is here. <laughs> 2019 is just before us here. We are preparing now. How are we doing that? What is happening with the party congresses going everywhere? Are we, is the process transparent? Are we getting it? We're having double parallel congresses here and there. We have to get it right there. Right. If we don't, we are not going to get it, go anywhere. All right. Let's go back to the phones. Nasarawa from Nasarawa calling in Dahiru. Hello, Dahiru. Hello, are you there? Dahiru from Nasarawa, are you there? Hello, this is Dahiru from Nasarawa. Right, State. go right ahead. I believe you can hear me. Yes, we can. Go on. So my own is a question goes to the judge. He says that he's talking about evidence and all that. Our prison is filled with awaiting trial. If issue, the issue comes for a poor man, before you know it, they will send someone to jail. 75% of our prison is filled with poor men there. But if it is the issue of the big looters, they will start talking about uh, evidence. I don't know. I want him to explain this to me. And the second question goes to the senator. I don't believe that they are supporting this government for the issue of fighting corruption. When the whistleblower comes up, before you know it, in a short period of time, they pass the law to cripple the issue of whistleblower. Now people are afraid to blow the whistle. Why is it like that? So I don't believe that they are supporting the fighting of corruption. Secondly, for the senator again, with due respect, for them to make a law for special court for corrupt cases up to now, it stands still. They didn't pass the, 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 the law. Why is it like that? So I don't support that one of the people that trying to make sure that they didn't succeed, uh, this government did, uh, did not succeed of fighting corruption. So they should explain it to me. That's my contribution. Thank All you. All right. Thank you very much. You have taken note of your questions, but um, 
my lord and the senator will respond to those issues right after this break stay with us on nta tuesday live we'll be back shortly Sinoni Restaurant, serving authentic, delicious, and healthy Chinese cuisine. Nigerians, our fearless officers and men of the Nigerian military are winning the war against Boko Haram. Today, all occupied territories have been recovered and Boko Haram has been degraded. Our affected brothers and sisters are getting their lives back. However, they are now after you and me. In our mosques, churches, schools, motor parks, markets, entertainment centers, and public gatherings. Be vigilant. Be security conscious. Report suspicious persons, objects, and movements to the police and other security agencies. The security of our nation is a duty for you and me. Nigeria unite against terrorism. This message is brought to you by the Federal Minister of Information and Culture. The struggle for independence had been a long and tough one. Our founding fathers and compatriots sacrificed their comfort and even shed their blood. We cannot at this point in history afford to spirit away their sacrifices for immediate but temporary gains of today. Let us emphasize what unites and not what divides us. Working for the unity of purpose with a stronger vision for a better tomorrow. NTA, growing with the nation. Nigeria, the only country we can train with remarkable potentials to excel. Let us believe in ourselves and change our attitude for the sake of our country and generations unborn. Let us revive our cultural values which are our essence as a nation. Let us renew the spirit of patriotism and hope in our dear country. Do not take or give bribe. Be punctual always. No more African time. We can't expect to be global citizens and operate on African time. Join the queue. Insist that people are attended to on a first-come basis no matter who they are or where they come from. Nigeria, good people, great nation. The play will make you report any crooked person, object or wakajube movement to police and security agent demo. The security of our nation now work for all of us, so, plus including me and you. Nigeria, make we unite against terrorism. The Federal Minister of Information and Culture bring on this message. Tuesday Live, a network issue-oriented innovation talk show. Thanks for staying with us. Just before the break, uh, Ahiru called in from Nasara and he, had, uh, he raised a number of issues um, to uh, the chief judge of Delta State here. He raised the issue of um, whether justice is for the rich and um, he says for the poor, they get to be sent to jail easily, while for those who are rich, 
um, all kinds of issues would come in, technicalities, proving beyond reasonable doubt. So we did say that uh, my Lord will respond to uh, that immediately after the break. So, my Lord. Yes, uh, Daru, thank you very much for your question. You contended that 75% of inmates in our prisons are poor men. I disagree. I will use Delta State as a template. We have five prisons in Delta State. Wari, Sapele, Agbo, Ogwashiku, and Kuale. The capacity for these five prisons is supposed to be about 1,200. But today, it's we're housing about 4,000. Most of the inmates are aged between 17 and 27. Most of the inmates are school dropouts. Most of the inmates are from broken homes. Most of the inmates have no uncles or aunties to fall back on. Most of the inmates are not prepared to learn the trade. And what brought them into crime? Because of dysfunctional families. And they are involved in violent crimes, kidnapping, murder, rape. You've talked about them now, but you, you forgot to remember, you forgot to tell us about the victims of the alleged crimes. Small girls that were raped, people sent to their early graves. There's a whole body of study now called victimology. We should also concern ourselves about the victims of this crime. We are so concerned about people in custody. In Delta State, we have six criminal courts dedicated, now nine, with the appointment of judge, now nine, trying criminal cases. So it is not because they are poor. It is because they were alleged to have committed violent crimes and the law to keep, take its course. Just recently, Delta State, we sentenced a traditional ruler to death for committing murder. So in Delta State, the law is for all. If you commit, you commit an offense, and the DPP is of the opinion that you should face trial, you face the trial. So that's my answer for that. All right, so um, issues for uh, Senator Tazi, and uh, it says uh, the legislature is not in full support of the anti-corruption stance of the government, and uh, he alleges that the Senate passed a law which has crippled the whistleblower policy, and also they failed to move ahead with special course. Senator. Well, you see, uh, I, I don't agree with him and uh, what he said. I don't think he has all the information. Mm -hmm. The National Assembly, especially the Senate where I belong, all the anti-corruption uh, 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 bills that are, are there, most of them are true. We have issues in the House of Representatives where they are trying to, they are not as fast as the Senate. We hope they are going to get there. But so we don't uh, discrimi uh, discriminate on these issues. Then the, the what he was talking about, uh, 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 the, this, uh, uh, which, uh, the whistleblower. whistleblower. No, whistleblower is say on. After all, if uh, you follow uh, the events in the public, uh, um, uh, in the public uh, domain, mm -hmm. the, the minister was sharing money, yes. giving yes. money. What? They were having issues. People who were sharing money were having issues with themselves. I'm so, how are they going to share the, 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 the money they got from uh, their whistleblowing? You know, so that's the issue. That is the issue. So whistleblower is still on. Uh, Dahiro, if you have anybody that you know that is doing certain things you don't understand, go ahead. It's still open. We have, the National Assembly has never stopped whistleblowing uh, in, the, in the country. We encourage it. The laws, we are already pursuing all the relevant laws in, uh, that are before us to get them through, to ensure that uh, we have, a, uh, have a, a, a sane society where people can depend on, on each other and then make progress for our country. All right, at this point, uh, let's uh, see this report because, uh, as usual, we took our cameras out to the citizens to find out just what they think about this anti-corruption fight and how well they have keyed into it. Let's get to see that. Okay, you go to a place, uh, they work for you, or you work for a people, they're supposed to be paid. But because 
You refuse to do what the accountants want you to do. They sit on your money. For only God knows that they don't mind how it affects national economy, the growth of national economy. They don't mind. You pay a contractor, you pay a businessman, he will pay his tax. And the tax will be used in nation building. So you frustrate him. You stand on his progress and you stand on the economic growth of the nation. Yet you don't want to know. Perhaps that is no corruption. There are times you go and pay money to account for the rendering of services. Maybe it's something that people at the helm of affairs supposed to put signature. They will tell you that before they put signature, you must give them money. So what is happening in our society, that is, we, have, we need to change. And this corruption of a thing is not supposed to be one, one person of a thing. Because if you look at the Mr. President on his own side, he's really trying. Well, I'll start by saying that the present government have actually done well. They have done a lot. But they still have a lot to do. They need to still put some system in place to check the act of corruption. And they should not focus, they should not put their focus only on the leaders, even on the followers or the subordinates. Let more work be done. Okay, basically more sensitization has to be done because um, the more people are aware that, okay, corruption is a cancer. That means, okay, the more people know that, the more corrupt we are, we are the ones that are going to suffer. I think people will start having a change of mind towards corruption as a topic because uh, the, the, the truth remains that, okay, whatever happens in society is a representation of who we are. So the more we sensitize each other on changing our minds towards being more transparent, more honest, uh, more, more basically anti-corrupt in our practices, I think uh, people will be able to see the need for anti-corruption in society. The, I, I believe so far that the legal system really needs to be changed, like a lot of things need to be worked on. And also the role of the judiciary system, they need to really come to a realization of the part they have to play to keep the society sane. Now, when it comes to corrupt judges, I kind of doubt sometimes the issues that they face. I understand the issues that they face in terms of threats to their lives and all. but. The fact that they took an oath to protect the sanity of our society should be the foremost uh, thing that should be at the back of their minds when it comes to ruling. Because it could be them at the other side of the table and they could be the ones suffering from this thing. So the, the conscience of the judiciary is primary to a successful society for us. Take for example in Lagos recently, I saw the, if the um, law that was passed that they allow you, you want to claim small monies as a business person. You don't need to go to the typical courts. You can go to, um, they made a small claims court so that the issues will not linger around. So you don't need to go to a normal law court to reclaim just 100,000 naira that someone is owing you, which is a very um, good direction. So we could learn from that and copy it and also paste it around other states too. So many people were happy that this fight will goes around the corner. But after a while, we discovered that this fight is always, the fighting of, of, against corruption is almost to one direction, which is to the previous party, PDP. And it's not going to the other direction, which is the APT itself. Well, voice of the people. But um, let's start off by asking uh, Prof here to... Uh, respond to particularly the last um, the, the last uh, respondent there in uh, that Vox Pop. Uh, this is because this matter has come up again, the question of uh, what people call selective fight. Is this fight selective? That's on one hand. And uh, perhaps it would be also nice to bring back the issue of the whistleblower policy. How well is that doing? Well, I, I, as I said earlier on, I don't think the fight is selective. Um, I think this is a perception. Mm -hmm. uh, and also because the, the previous government was a different political party, and the current government is starting its forensic uh, evaluation from there, 
obviously it's inevitable that this perception will gain ground and people will say that uh, it's a focus on if you look at a number of people who were previously in the pdp and crossed with the apc quite a number of them are still being prosecuted uh, you know in the courts so this allegation of um, a one-sided fight i don't think it has grounding uh, on the whistleblower policy uh, in april PACAC, we did a one-year review in collaboration with the Federal Minister of Finance of the whistleblower policy to see how well it had fared, what we needed to change, and what's working well and what's not working well. Um, unfortunately, of course, uh, even though we put an incentive in the, in the whistleblower policy to assist government get intelligence that it needs, you know, people are focused more on the incentive rather than the whole framework of the whistleblower well, policy. Well, that's natural, isn't it? It is natural indeed. <laughs> However, the, the interesting funny. thing is that the whistleblower policy actually goes as far as saying if you have information about some wrongdoing, the incentive policy is about where there's a cash recovery. Right. Okay, the, okay. You can get money. Some percentage. Exactly. But if your whistle prevents, for example, mass killing of citizens. Yes. It is useful, for example, you know of somebody who's doing something that can kill hundreds of mm. thousands of people and you blow the whistle, that's highly commendable, but there will be no uh, yes, financial reward. Yet, you still have a duty to report. Under the law, everybody has a duty to report. I'm aware that the draft B whistleblower bill that was passed by the Senate actually goes a bit further than the policy. It sets up a fund, a whistleblower fund, which enables whistleblowers who provide information that is very useful, no cash recovery this time, but it's found to be very useful to society to actually earn from that fund. Okay, so that, that bill, if it eventually is passed as they've presented it, it goes slightly beyond the policy. So, and all of the public engagements we have had on the whistleblower policy, I've spoken at all those engagements, and I start off by saying, even without the whistleblower policy, Citizens, by law, have a duty to report crime. That's the first thing. It's a civic responsibility of all of us if you know that something has gone wrong because law enforcement agencies are not mag magicians. They can only work based on information that they are given, and they are not everywhere all the time. They are not omnipresent. So we must recognize that, first and foremost, we have a constitutional duty, you know, and there are many laws that require and oblige citizens to report crime. So the whistleblower policy is doing very well. I mean, the review that we did about a month ago, we looked at areas through which it can be improved on. For example, devolving it beyond the federal level, right. as has been rightly said. Because the truth is that there's a lot more corruption beyond the federal level okay. at the state and local government, which is more harmful. You know, but everybody looks at the federal level okay. well, as if that's the only that's, place where. Well. All right. <laughs> yes. Mm. Well, back to the phones now. We have uh, Umar Anachi, I believe, calling in from Brendan Kavi. Hello, Umar. Thank you, Zero. I'm um, Umar Anachi calling from Brendan Kavi. If you are serious as a nation in fighting against corruption, we have to change the presumption law. If you are charged to court, uh, presume to be guilty until proved is reasonable doubt. You're supposed to read presumed to be innocent. I mean, if you are charged to court, you presume to be guilty until proved beyond reasonable doubt that you are innocent. This presumption law is very important. Secondly, we should stop celebrating corrupt people. The corrupt people, we should stop celebrating them. The amount that this guy under, uh, 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 under in, in, in the woman's dress. Later on, I think the traditional uh, uh, community of his own uh, area, call him and give him traditional title. What, what sort of that? We should celebrate, we, we should stop celebrating uh, uh, corrupt people. Then, if they're fighting against corruption, if we are fighting against corruption, if we are serious again, we should strengthen the institution to the extent that. 
they can carry out forensic investigation. And again, we should set a special court for, for, for corrupt cases. And we should retrain and train our, our lawyers to, 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 to the extent that they can, they can, they can fight against corruption. I mean, they can defend, they, they, they can prosecute. Our problem also of, of Nigeria is that we don't have lawyers that are good in prosecution. That is our problem in Nigeria. We don't have lawyers that are good in prosecution. All what we have is lawyers that can defend their cases. They are good in that. Then, above all, above all, masses, we the masses in Nigeria, have to take ownership of fighting against corruption. May God continue to bless our country. Amen. Thank you. Right. Thank you very much, Umar Anachi. And uh, we go straight to uh, Dr. Tunja Bayomi in Lagos. What do you say to Umar's recommendation that uh, you take into court, you should be presumed guilty until you prove your innocence on the one hand, and secondly, the matter of special courts to try corruption cases? We are running uh, a common law uh, system which requires uh, the proof of guilt through evidence. There's a presumption of innocence. And I think it protects the innocent because we must also appreciate that there are cases in which people are charged to court and they may not, in fact, be culpable. In such a case, they have a chance to free themselves through evidence. I do not think it will all go well to substitute the French system for the common law system, which requires proof beyond reasonable doubt. But my interest, again, is really to re-emphasize the issue, issue of corruption. There are two problems that I think this nation needs to confront. The first issue is that when you have a nation that focuses on money instead of knowledge, you will not have progress. I re-emphasize it. When you have a nation that focuses on money instead of knowledge, when you look at human evolutionary progression, the greatest achievement of nations have generally come through the preoccupation with knowledge instead of even the worth of a nation. That's the first issue. The second issue I want to emphasize is that one must understand, as I see it, the value of the present government. And that is that the government, as I see it, is working to protect the nation against individuals. Instead of the old order, the previous governments, who largely preoccupied themselves with protecting individuals against a nation, when you are fighting against corruption, you are actually protecting the nation against individuals. And for that, I think we need to support the government and commend it. The final issue I want to emphasize, Syria, is that this nation faces tremendous tragedy. And it is sad. What is the tragedy that, has, that corruption has brought to this nation? Today, nearly 80% of employable youths in this nation have no job. Out of that 80%, at least 50% at least are well-educated. And this includes well-trained children of even the elite in this nation. Why are we where we are today? When a nation gets to a level where even the best trained 
her best trained youths, well trained youths, cannot even find a path to progress. The nation is imperiled. So we must raise our head, our emotion, our spirit, our energy against corruption. Unfortunately, I must say that I don't see it. I just see the government alone working, and we keep talking about it, just talking about it. The people themselves must rise up if they want this nation to become anything. They must rise up and make corruption, like one of the callers uh, said, they must rise up to make it a people's movement. If you look at the local governments, who is fighting against corruption? If you look at the states, who is fighting against corruption? If you look at most of the systems, the only language of anti-corruption is at the federal level, maybe at the presidency, as far as I know. So we need to think anew. We need to think differently. We cannot continue to do the same thing, work the same way, and expect a new result. This nation is not going to develop unless we work for it. We must weak will for change, like uh, Thomas Paine said, and we must work for change. OK, thank you. We have uh, Usman, who's calling in from Abuja. Hello, Usman. Usman, are you still with us? Hello, Usman. Yeah, hello, good evening. Yes, go right ahead, please. Hello, good evening. Go right ahead, good evening. Yeah, I'm still with you, good evening. Hmm. Yeah, um, I want to talk on the issue of uh, what the first caller talked about. Yeah, what the first caller talked about. Um, my Lord, with all due respect, the lawyers we have are bent on a, a bent, they are bent on petty issues. Um, when you are in the um, ruling party or the government of the day, you are being celebrated, you are not corrupt. But when you are on the opposition party, you are, you are declared a corrupt person. Now, the issue of uh, judges, um, with all due respect, um, you permit me to say that, my lord, that um, the judges we have that, that are judging the corrupt cases, they are judging the cases to favor the present government as if they are being paid or being uh, forced to judge cases in favor of the ruling party or the present government. Then also, I want to talk about... Um... All right. Well, we lost that call, but uh, straight away, my lord, would uh, uh, take up that issue with them. <laughs> <laughs> Well, is the government teleguiding the judiciary? See, I, to the best <laughs> of my knowledge, to the best of my knowledge, government is not teleguiding the judiciary. To the best of my knowledge. And no judge has complained that he's being teleguided. Any, judge, any judgment delivered by a judge is the product of the law and facts and its understanding of those facts. No judge is being teleguided. And at any rate, we have appellate system. If you are dissatisfied with the judgment of the trial court, you go to the Court of Appeal. If you are dissatisfied in the Court of Appeal, go to the Supreme Court. And if you have ground to question the ethical conduct of, the, of any judge, the NJC is there under the leadership of Armbo uh, Johnson to fearlessly deal with such judge. Recently, a petition was written against a justice of the Supreme Court, and a panel was set up to investigate a justice of the Supreme Court. 
So I, I won't buy. I, 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 I disagree. No judge is being teleguided, to the best of my knowledge. Mm -hmm. every, judge, yeah. every judge is sovereign in his court, up to the Akali in an area court in the village. I right. can, you can take that to the bank. <laughs> okay. Yes. Well, yes. Senator. Yes, sir, I want to say something. You know, the, we have been discussing mm. the effects of corruption mm. on the society. We have also have to look at the ways of trying to bring corruption down. Yes. You know, it's very, very important. The society we have found ourselves in here has created room for people to be corrupt. I'll give you an example. A civil servant works for 35 years. He has children, pays school fees and all that. He has need of a house. A car. He has need of a car. He has to do, even pay school fees. In our system here, before he builds a house, he must have the whole money to start building the house. If he want to buy the car, he must have the whole money to buy the car. And do a few other things. In our society here, the welfare system, this government has to start thinking about it. So that if the, there is a system where you can get into mortgage that is effective, government build houses, government flats, you know, we have county, uh, have county flats over there. Mm -hmm. You move in there. If you don't have any job, we have stipend. You pick. If you, if you get job, you get out of the road, you know, and start earning income. If you want to have a car, you get there, walk, uh, pick uh, any car of, uh, the, of your choice, and continue paying piecemeal, monthly, weekly, as the case may be. If you want to do a few, few uh, activities here. Home appliances. Home appliances. appliances. You want to buy a, a, a phone. <laughs> you, 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 have the, uh, you have to ask, how do you want to uh, pay? If we have this in, in, in the system, it will help discourage corruption. But when somebody feels that he has all these needs, he someday he's going to leave. He starts working for the rainy day. So this system, so if we talk about the other one, we also talk the other side of it. How will we, the system, think, uh, think out with this issue? How do we lo follow this issue? How do we solve a problem that we see that is existing? So that we will not encourage even the good ones who are, who are good not to get to the, to the extent of crossing the boundary and start offending the law. Now, beyond the uh, issue I want, of I want him to Right. Okay, well, yes. I wanted to yes. say yes. something. Yes, on what he has. I want, <laughs> well, I, I want to comment on the two <laughs> issues. Yes. First, the gentleman who called in and said the judges were giving judgment in favor of the present government. I would have liked him to cite just one example. Just one. Not true. One. Indeed, if he were correct, the perception that the judiciary is obstructive of the anti-corruption agenda would not be there. It would have been the other way around. Mm -hmm. So clearly, he's not right. You okay. know, right. Um, that's number one. I agree absolutely with uh, Senator Tazi that prevention, they say, is better than care. Mm. Uh, we need to strengthen prevention mechanisms to fight corruption effectively. The truth of the matter is that it's difficult to fight corruption on an empty stomach. And the system as it is actually predisposes to corruption. Uh, there are a lot of human roadblocks that push you towards corruption. There are things that have been set up in the system advertently or inadvertently over the years. They are designed to make you fail, and they are designed to make you fall, especially within the civil service structure. They need to be dismantled, and we have to be honest about those issues. I could give examples. For example, the, the entire system about funds releases and budgeting is a recipe for crisis and for corruption. Towards the end of the year, sometimes, government will release funds which they want to mop up uh, in December 31st. Okay? If you don't release those monies on time as when they need, you have made room for abuse. In my opening statement, I said that, in summary, corruption afflicts us in both the revenue and expenditure side. Yes. Revenue because money due government is diverted. That's what TSA is supposed to deal with. But TSA is just one step going forward. Then in the expenditure side, there's also a lot of corruption, misapplication of funds, 
uh, wrongful use of funds, and all that. They prevent the opportunity for the kind of social safety nets that Senator Tazi is talking about. And it is possible. One, we have the Social Insurance Trust Fund. We have the National Health Act. We have UBEC. These three legislations are very powerful, potent, statutory instruments for improving livelihoods. The National Health Act says just budget 1% of whatever is for health. Once you've done budgeting, that's one part of the story. The second is to track it and make sure that it is properly utilized. I because the sharks, the sharks are there waiting to steal the money. Okay? <laughs> Same thing with NSITF, which is designed to say, if you suffer some calamities, if you're unemployed and all that, you have opportunity to earn some welfare. You know, once people appreciate that these social safety nets are there, the propensity to steal will be diminished. Then final point that he made, which I also agree with, is only in Nigeria that any capital asset that a family would require is cash and carry. The entire financial services system, just today, the Monetary Policy Committee held their meeting and they were saying that they need to introduce measures to make sure that banks, okay, put credit back into the economy. Because the banks are not putting credit in the economy, but the banks themselves are victims of this system that we have created. It you is, know, sir. Whereby you want to borrow money at its double digit. How many people can afford that? You know, so there's a lot that we need to unpack. And it's not, it's not a hundred meters dash. This whole conversation is a marathon. We have wow. to look wow. for, it's a long marathon, we have to look for measures. First, like I said, we already have some statutory instruments that we can use effectively. We just need to put the will behind it. The political will to say if you appropriate for NSITF, UBEC, they should be top priority for monitoring by the legislature. And it should be clear and transparent. And for civil society to say any money appropriated in those sectors, if properly used, will certainly ease the pains of Nigerians. Then, of course, there are other measures that we can also take. Right. Well, let me just go back quickly to a suggestion that was made earlier on and ask your opinion about it as a professor okay. of law. Someone says, look, do away with the presumed innocent okay, of okay. the proven guilty. I was, going to, I was going to make a comment about that. Yeah. I actually agree with that guy only for corruption cases, hmm. not the entire criminal justice process. Only for corruption cases. For example, the guy makes sense. As far as my experience, little experience, this fighting corruption business, we have found you with one billion. Mm -hmm. We don't know how you stole it. Only you know how you stole it. And you're asking me to prove it. I can prove it. I cannot prove it. So in such a situation, the burden should be reversed. That presumption should go for corruption cases. You tell us, after all, if you can, your father left you a legacy. You woke up one morning, you find it can be quantified. You won a lottery. All this is there. You are able to tell or, us. Or, you, or, or maybe you stumbled, you are, you stumbled, you stumbled on, of a, on it. Of a big brother. A, a big brother. Like you <laughs> want big brother. You know, <laughs> clearly, it's very difficult. And this is standard all over the world. Oftentimes, it turns out that the evidence that law enforcement agencies need to prove grand corruption is in the hands of the defendant. The defendant has more capacity than the state. Let's look at the Nigerian scenario. Look at the typical anti-corruption case in court. The defense comes with five senior advocates or ten. The state comes with one lawyer who probably arrived in public transport. Psychologically, the battle is already lost and won. Why has the state been so weakened? Corruption. Corruption has weakened the state. The state cannot capacitate its own prosecution department. The state cannot train well its own prosecutors. The state cannot spend the money that is required to get quality evidence. Exactly, because people th also th say th the thing you, about th what is the cost of, th of, of, of uh, fighting corruption. Th thank, you, thank, you, thank you very much. So this is very critical. Thank you, I think he has made the point. Thank you. That is the truth. Like under the administration of criminal justice now, magistrates are expected to visit police stations and prisons. With what? They should go there in Keke or Kada. The vehicles are not there. We thought we went on tour to, to Jigawa, Federal High Court Jigawa. It's in a self-contained flat in Dusi. That's where a judge is sitting. 
Hmm. And I have to say, add uh, to this, yeah. you see, in the some of the government agencies, I don't want to call them mm -hmm. now because I do oversight. They peg how much they're going to pay a lawyer handling cases for government agencies. How do you expect that the person will not compromise? Mm. How do you expect that the person will give him his best? You are working for government. You're collecting so much money, doing one thing or the other, defending, thing, defending the government. And at the end of the day, you are giving a pittance. And the, other, the lawyer at the other side is well paid. You know, Bro, so you, you, you I'm watch happy, him, I'm happy you know, to have come to court. So government is also helping to pull itself down. So we really have to look at all this in two, a total overhaul. Okay. All right. Okay. Let's, let, that, okay. let me just give you another example. Take the typical DPO, the local government area. It's not giving money to operate the patrol vehicle. Mm. Mm. Uh, you know, you not have. It's not giving. How we how how, okay. how will it maintain the vehicle? Okay. It now depends on the power brokers in the locality to maintain the, the vehicle. criminals and then <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, as we begin you, to wind you, down... You get the point. Yes, my lord. You got the point. As, as we begin to wind down, let's go back to our legal center. Dr. Abayo, you have harped on this all through. So no, perhaps I'm... we will ask you at this point. Now, the people, you've talked about the people taking this, owning this fight against corruption. How best can the people do it? At what point should we now begin to hold people? Because you see, many times they say, well, it's the people who begin to put ideas into the heads of their leaders. You get appointed as a director general, there's a party that's held. And uh, your village people say, oh, now it is our turn. How do you change all that? A man becomes a minister. And by the time he leaves office, if he doesn't have a mansion to show for it, he's wasted his time. You forgot what of this uh, is pastor. <laughs> it's important to appreciate that change throughout human history has always come through agitation. And usually, the agitation of the people for change. If we look at the short history of our nation, you will see that the uh, major changes have always come because the people work for change. At independence, we wanted freedom from colonialism. And because our people were united in that struggle, they got it. In the struggle, against dictatorship. We worked hard. In my case, I went to jail three times, one for one year in that struggle. And the people backed the effort. The reality of the matter is that when the people are determined to bring about change, they will have change. But let me emphasize something. I have said it on your program, Cyril, that one of the principal challenges of this nation is for the peoples of Nigeria to agree on the nature of government they want. There are lots of issues that perhaps need not be centralized if we are going to have development. But as it is now, like I have said, Nigeria actually does not have a constitution. And when I say Nigeria does not have a constitution, we don't have a constitution agreed upon by the peoples of Nigeria. It is not a government that gives a nation a constitution. It is a constitution that gives a nation a government. And if we look at this, the situation of Nigeria, it, the constitution we have was never actually agreed upon, negotiated by our people. It was forced on us by the military. Let me also remind you that it is not the content of a constitu it is not the content of a constitution that validates it. It is the procedure of making a constitution. I believe that this nation has a potential to be one of the greatest nations in the world. But 
The people must come to the fundamentality of leadership and governance. America began its life through a confederal arrangement. It got midway and discovered that it was giving it an imperfect society. It turned around and gave itself a federal arrangement that has made America one of the greatest nations in the world. I believe that this nation, Nigeria, can be the America of Africa if the people are determined to make it what it is. But it will come through determined effort, sacrificed by leaders. In the case of America, 55 great men, Dr. Quinn, the French philosopher, said 55 of the greatest minds in the world came together and created a federal constitution for that nation. I ask, where are the great men and women of Nigeria to rise for her greatness? Me and uh, yes, we're winding down. And uh, so, you know, let's go back to the people. As yes, a leader in your own right, and say yes. How? What do you put in as to make everyone realize that uh, not everyone has to be a senator in order to make it? Yes, you see, that's the the, the issue. Leadership recruitment mm. is at the heart of everything we're doing. It's not just anybody who wants to answer a name. A whole world who feels that he has the money, then he can go for anything. We must go back to the old system that, that was started in the 60s. We, people look for people to put them in a certain position based on merit. We must look at this merit. You see, if you want to win a game, you look for the best legs to go and play for you. But if you want you coats of many colors, you sacrifice competence. And everybody suffers. All the, the world we want from this nation is this nation look for the best material from all parts of the country. Get them into involved in government. You may not like their faces, but you can yeah. trust on their trust their, their competence to deliver. Everybody will get out of it. But if you just want your own people, my people, the person must be from your religious background, we worship the same, in the same mosque or church. The person must be from the same ethnic background. The person must be from your own political affiliation or business connections. We will never get there. We must think out of the box. We must start looking, get, look, following the antecedents of the nations that have arrived. We don't just have to wait each time you bring this issue and they say, let us just be going, moving slowly. You can't get there. Today, the world is a global village. There is no room for anybody to wait for you until you get there. If you have, if you, you, you just have to leapfrog. That's what we have to do. If you are wasting the whole time, you leapfrog and get to the other people who already have idea. And they are there in the domain, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the system. Pick those information, get the right people here to. That's why I say 2019 is here. It's here. We have to look for people who are qualified, who are informed, who have integrity in their minds, who can deliver and are there. And I shame the money bags, people who have accumulated money uh, through the fraudulent means, and they come and unleash it on the society. Let the society collect those money and look for the people with credibility. Who can deliver? That's the only way Nigeria can come out of the woods. Okay. If we don't, we are going nowhere. Right, my lord. Okay, the, yeah, what I would say is that uh, the judiciary is support of the anti-corruption war. There's no doubt about it. Like what the president will say, if we don't kill corruption, corruption will kill us. The judiciary is in support, and we shall do everything to do to support it according to the rule of law. That's our own stand. Because we have taken oath to do so without fear or favor. So the, the perception that the judiciary as a body is a stumbling block, I don't think it's very correct. It's not very correct. Then the perception that the judiciary is corrupt is not so correct. Because we're about 1,050 judges in Nigeria. Out of the 1,200, 1,050, about 266 are in the federal level, the others are at the state level. 
and the women are about 150. How many of these judges are corrupt? There's no doubt. There are few, but the NJC, under the leadership of Honorable Joseph Nonge, is fearlessly prepared to weed out the bad eggs amongst us, and we do so fearlessly. So that's my, that's my message. All right. Prof. Well, I, I think that um, the commitment of the government to fight corruption, uh, I don't think it should be any further in doubt. I think that a number of people at the outset of 2015 thought that this would be a flash in the pan, but it's not a flash in the pan. And the resolve of Mr. President, I think, is clear. As they say, a prophet has no honor at home. Uh, whereas Nigerians are cynical about the little progress that has been made, no doubt there are still plenty of challenges. The international community recognizes that something is happening because they, they, they were watching us and they know what had been happening before and they can see the trend of what is happening now. I think that my final observation will be that the government alone cannot fight corruption. It's an illusion for anybody to think that this is Mr. President's crusade and that if the anti-corruption agenda fails, Mr. President has failed. No, it's in fact the other way around. As I say to people, let's assume that the conclusion, if you can validate it, is that the anti-corruption agenda has failed. No. It's not a personal loss to me. Because if it succeeds, what am I going to get extra except the gratification and the satisfaction that we put our thought processes behind this challenge and we were able to move it forward? So if this whole agenda fails, Nigeria is in trouble. No doubt about it. Nigeria is in big trouble. So we've got to collectively and recognize that this is in our collective self interest. It's not about Mr. President. It's not for political sloganeering. Indeed, I say that any government ultimately that would take office, if it does not fight corruption, corruption will bring it down. That is true. Uh, inevitably. So we, we should recognize that this is in our best interest and just support government to fight corruption. All right. And uh, it's at this point we'll have to thank our guests I always say this, no one program can take care of all the issues. Some other time we'll revisit this issue. It's, uh, it's ongoing. Um, there's no start and stop to it. It's uh, something, it's a fight that goes on. So let's thank all our guests. And uh, from our Lagos Network Center, where we had Dr. Tunja Abayomi, constitutional lawyer, join us. Dr. Abayomi, it's been a pleasure to have you. It's been some time we haven't seen you, so it's, uh, it's, it's nice to see you again. Thank you for coming. Nice to see you again. Thank you, you very much. Ma Thank you. And, uh, Thank you. and Professor uh, Balaji Owaso is member, Executive Secretary, Presidential Advisory Committee Against Corruption. Thank you very much, Professor Blobo. Thank you for being here. Thank you for inviting me. Right. And uh, my Lord Justice Marshall Umukuru, Chief Judge of Delta State and member of the Corruption and Financial Crimes Cases trial monitoring committee we thank you for being here thank you thank you giving us uh, yes you yeah, giving us the benefit of your thank you very vast uh, wealth of knowledge we thank you yeah. senator chuku kautazi chairman senate committee on anti-corruption and financial crimes thank you it's always a pleasure to have you here thank you so much for having me again today right thank you and also thank you to you too for being part of this program next week we'll reach you again on nta tuesday live i'm cyril stober bye for now